Hello everyone, today I will be playing the StarCraft II co-op mode. So for those who haven't played this mode, a simple explanation of it is that you play a regular StarCraft, well, a StarCraft II campaign mission essentially, except you get to do it with a partner. And additionally, you also get unique classes to play. So instead of playing the generic Protoss in the campaign or something of that sort, you are Protoss with a ton of special abilities. However, to compensate for the special abilities, each class has a more narrow amount of units available to you. So instead of having every single Protoss unit, you get, say, 15, but they're inked up on steroids. Also, each class gets four abilities. Um, some have to unlock theirs throughout the match, and others start with all of them right at the beginning. So the class I'm currently playing is, uh, I guess technically not a class, but rather a person. The person I'm currently playing is Rory, I believe that's his name. And actually, I know his, it might be his last name, but I know Swan is part of it. I think it's Rory Swan. Anyway, the gist of this character is that instead of building with a barracks, you instead build with a factory, so you just keep outputting mechanical units instead of biological units. The trade-off with that, um, or rather, the reason why that's not necessarily better than biological units is because mechanical units are more expensive, so it's difficult to get as many of them as them of them. And if you do happen to lose your army, it is more expensive to rebuild it. Gotcha. So, for a simple explanation purpose, uh, for my, or rather my strategy explained for this class, um, I believe this is my fifth match maybe is this guy. Anyway, the strategy I use when playing him is to, uh, well you're pretty much seeing it, <laughs> but uh, simply put, I make a supply depot once I start building my 15th SCV, and then I make, oh, nice time fish. Yeah. Rough start, but is what it is. Looks like he's got that issue handled though. Worst case, uh, we just wait till my hellbats are made. Yeah, that can be something that occasionally um, goes wrong in uh, co-op mode. There's waves of enemies that tend to come a little normal than a normal enemy wave would. So, get taken I don't know, by surprise to an extent. However, it's actually not too big of a deal. Um, because as long as you don't just completely die, it's not very difficult to build up an army. So, so back to the strategy that I was talking about. Um, so yeah, build three supply depots. That gets you uh, past the initial supply depot block, I guess, if you want to call it that. Oh wow, he's building his command center early. Not a bad strategy, but uh, I don't know. Talk to me. I personally go. prefer to destroy that Hell first yeah. before I build it. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I still haven't actually gotten around to this. I've just done a terrible job. Um, yeah, so three supply depots, then one to two factories, then gas uh, production places, and then additional supply depots as needed, and then add on the armory, and if you feel so inclined at any point, you can uh, start researching the laser drill upgrade. And that's about it. Aside from those, uh, that basic outline, you're just you know, building more units, upgrading them, and that's you know, the gist of it. So what I'm doing right now, for those who haven't played, is I'm making a reactor, which allows two units to be made at the same time, but only specific units, so in this case, Hellbats and Goliaths. And I'm also building a tech lab, which allows me to get some researches for these units, and it unlocks two additional units. Um, personally, however, I don't actually use the additional units because I find for their price they aren't really oh, yeah. worth it. So the way I can lose this game is in... Uh, there's two ways I can lose. Uh, the first way is if we don't do anything, or rather if we don't kill this within six minutes. And the second way I can lose is if all of our structures are destroyed. 
Aside from that, though, you're pretty much... Uh, you can't lose, aside from those two ways. Alright. So then, once uh, the armory is finished, I like to do that, and then also start the uh, laser drill upgrade. Because once the first laser drill upgrade finishes, this uh, laser beam damage goes up to 30. And you also unlock the concentrated beam ability, which is a pretty strong one. Hopefully he'll join me in this attack, but uh, looks like he's holding back. Um, it looks like that actually went pretty well. With my very light amount of micro, I managed to keep both the Hellbats alive. For the moment, I'm not going to be repairing them because I'm making a starport, which will allow me to make a unit that can repair them for free. So now I'm going to start making some SCVs up for this base. And once this is dead, I'm going to go destroy these uh, two gas blocks. And also, the cool thing is, uh, my units were actually repaired by this guy's medics. So now they're back up to full HP. So these guys are both biological and mechanical, so that's a cool little bonus of them. So now I'm going to research the Infernal Preigniter, which makes it so if the unit has the light tag like this, uh, he, these guys will do an additional 15 damage to them. It also has a nice visual effect of turning their uh, attack blue. I think that really matters though. So now I'll be making some Goliaths. I, uh, they're pr I would say they're substantially stronger than Hellbats, uh, but they require 50 gas and 50% uh, more minimal minerals. So now my uh, SCV counts will gradually be going up here, and the more that are built, the faster I'll be able to get minerals. Unfortunately, uh, these mineral patches are only able to support approximately 21 units, so you can't get that many minerals. Um, yeah. So then, um, as I was saying earlier, waves will constantly be sent at you, so uh, my ally here is getting attacked by these marauders. Uh, whoops, looks like I uh, bit, uh, put the wrong thing in my control group. It was supposed to be the armory, but I did it on the SCV for some reason. Um, uh, another thing related to this, uh, uh, related to an extent, whenever you play RTS games like StarCraft 2, it's very important to make sure you use hotkeys so you don't waste time uh, moving your mouse to click stuff, like go, don't go here and click it, just press R. And for the most part, the hotkeys are designed to always be intuitive, so if I want to build a supply depot, I press B and S, and that builds the supply depot. You can also queue up additional buildings by holding the shift button. Alright, so now that, uh... My tech lab is done on my starport. I'm going to research the uh, free repair thing. And then I'm also going to start producing uh, science vessels. I like to get as many of these as possible because uh, they're just free flying uh, repair units. So they're pretty nice. Alright. So now I'm going to make um, two more factories. This is more or less just in preparation for like. 5-10 minutes from now, when I have a surplus of minerals, it's nicer to have them when you don't need them than the opposite. So, I've been building up a good amount of Goliaths, so I'm going to take those... Oh, actually, I was about to go to the bonus objective that appears right here, but it hasn't spawned yet. Alright. What's the story? Out there. Yep, there's my science vessel, and because of that research, it costs no ma uh, energy energy uh, to repair these guys. Usually it costs one energy per three repairs, so this is just much, much better. Actually, pretty much never use this ability, but it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Oh, there's that bonus objective that I was talking about. And with that, that will uh, take my uh, command center over there to the maximum amount of 
SCVs that it can maintain. So I'm going to move my rally points up a little bit further, which will uh, make it just a bit more convenient when I need to get my units. And I'm also going to start the construction of two more reactors. So now this is kind of like the equivalent of having six factories. Alright. So it looks like these kills are going pretty well. And, uh... Yeah. So the, it's actually mildly convenient that all my Hellbats died. I mean, you'd obviously prefer to have them alive, but the Hellbats are melee, uh, they're ground-only units, so I actually do require air units to, anti-air units to kill this. Oh, <laughs> I walked them out of the range, but then they walked back in. Yeah, it looks like I'll be losing some of my Goliaths here, which is going to be unfortunate because of because they're a bit pricey. However, uh, I think it's possible that I might be able to save a couple. But they're going to be very wounded. Oh no, did I lose one of a... I lost a science vessel, which is really bad, um, because of how long they take to construct. However, the army that I've been building up in the background here is doing pretty well. So next up, I'm going to research the Ares class targeting ability, and uh, set my next two researchers in my army, or armory, and then make uh, as many more of those as I can. So I'm once again running low on supply, so I'm just going to build a ton right over here. Then I'm also going to start the construction of an engineering bay, which will allow me to make anti-air turrets. Yeah, I thought he killed that. Okay, so then the next goal is up here, represented by the uh, green marks on the mini-map. So once this, uh, this research is done, I'll have my final ability, which is a 600 DPS AoE ability. It's pretty powerful. And it only has a cooldown of... Upgrade oh, cooldowns complete. are apparently not listed. Huh. Anyway, so then uh, I'm going to get my structure armor. I don't think I'll be using turrets this game, but on the off chance I do, I'll just prepare that research anyway. And I'm also going to make another star port uh, for the f uh, so that it can make more, uh, more of these faster, because they actually take 48 seconds to make. So just a ton of time on that. You always want to pay attention here and make sure you have, uh, well actually I suppose it's automatic, but what I was going to say is make sure you have even numbers on the reactors, um, because they can handle two units pop. Oh yeah, and now these are pairing each other, which is cool. Okay, looks like my partner here wants to attack, and I agree. So if I wanted to, yeah, just for fun, I'll use my pulse cannon. It's obviously not needed, but uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, so there's the cooldown. 300 seconds, which makes sense because of how powerful it is. And the side benefit of uh, my research is my uh, Draken Laser Beam, which is this thing. Now it does 50 damage a second, which is it's a pretty good upgrade. But here, one of my SCVs is idle. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually, uh, I think I said this earlier, but I don't really use any other units besides these three. Just Hellbats, Goliaths, and um, Science Vessels. And then occasionally I use turrets if the level is uh, like, good with them. So now that I've been building up some oil for her, now that I've been building up some Vespian gas for a little while, I'm going to make uh, Goliaths. Because, I mean, if you can't afford them, I think they're almost objectively better. Because these do 22 damage, and Goliaths do 20 damage, but from a greater range, and they have the ability to attack air. So there's just kind of never a reason to not use the Goliath. Uh, well, there is that if you can't afford it. Um, oh yeah, so the ability I just used, it's a map long laser beam that does 400 damage, and if you paid attention, you know that the radius is about like yay wide. So the next objective is going to be right 
here, I think, is another pirate ship to attack. Thankfully, this time I'll have substantially more Goliaths, which hopefully will make it easier to uh, do this time. Oh yeah, um, another cool thing, which is coming to come up, is once I win approximately... I'll just ballpark 10 more games with this guy, maybe 20. Um, I'll unlock the ability to make a tech reactor, which is this thing combined with this, and uh, so that'll be a pretty big improvement. Which is just an example of how much more powerful you get as you get stronger, because if you do want to make uh, tanks, you can now make two at a time instead of... <laughs> instead of uh, one at a time. Yeah, the characters just kind of get objectively stronger as they rank up because all the benefits are positive. And then once you reach level 15, you get these unlimited bonuses that, uh, no, 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 I think they cap out at, I think you cap out at level 180, if I recall correctly. But basically they give you smaller bonuses, like your units move 0.25% faster per point, which is nice, but very nice. Yeah. The fun thing about the uh, the uh, StarCraft 2 co-op is because they're just um, the missions are actually surprisingly satisfying to complete <laughs> because um, there's always less, a ton of objectives to get done. And then uh, the other thing that I think personally makes it more fun is if you play a different class every time you get a class to level 15. Because once you get a class to level 15, it gets too easy. An and this is already pretty easy right now. Like, <laughs> I'm actually under-leveled for this. I think I'm level 4. And for this difficulty level, they recommend 7. And at 4, I'm clearly not even having any difficulty. Oh yeah, I forgot. The last ability, which I have not showcased, is the combat drop. It drops 4 mediocre uh, war units in the radius. And the reason I say mediocre is they only have 400 HP and they only do 21 damage. Like They're about the equivalent of a Goliath with 2 times the health. That's okay. Just doesn't really seem 4 minute cooldown worthy. <laughs> yep, so that should nuke most of that. And let's keep my arm coming here. And because uh, the game's about to end all this, only bother making, uh, only bother making glides. Oh yeah, and the other thing, so, once again, for those who haven't played StarCraft 2, uh, the researches in the armory, which I've been doing, uh, increase your damage or armor by a minimal amount. I believe every single armor research gives one additional armor, and every single damage research gives an arbitrary amount, but uh, depends on the unit. Like for these guys, one damage research is one damage, but for these, I think it was four or something. So they get more efficient for more expensive units. Once again, here's the uh, beam. Fortunately, I wasn't actually paying that much attention in the uh, structure actually died. And my laser beam is already striking this. It does a decent amount of damage. 50 damage a second, I always think, uh, sounds more impressive than it actually is. Because 50 damage a second, it's like, oh, that's quite a bit. But then when you actually compare that in contrast with the health of the buildings at 4,000 health at 50 damage a second, that'd probably take numerous minutes. Anyway, so that's this mission. This kind of gives you an example of how to play a uh, mission. It also just kind of shows, uh, I guess, the Rory Swan class. And uh, I guess real quick here at the end of this video, I'll showcase the upgrades that I was talking about. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I'll take a quick detour. Um, I'm not 100% positive on this, but I want to tell you that co-op is free, and you get these three characters unlocked just by installing the game. However, uh, not 100% positive on that. The rest of the characters cost money though. Uh, you get these four for 15 bucks, and then it's five, 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 five. Which actually this one might be more than five. No, it's five. Uh, but if you ask me, they're actually kind of a little ridiculous, but it is what it is. So yeah, I'll just do a brief run through of each class here for fun. So Rainer uh, is, oh yep, this one. Uh, Rainer is a marine guy. 
pretty much. You just spam biological units. And uh, with this ability right here... Um, orbital drop pods. You do basically just set a rally point on your other units in every like X amount of seconds. You just have tons of guys dropping on uh, your army. And then the other thing you do with this guy is once you reach the end of the game, you build battle cruisers. Kerrigan, you get uh, Kerrigan to fight with. She's quite powerful. And usually all I do is spam Zerglings and Hydralisks with her. Uh, Artanis, pretty similar. Zealots and Dragoons. Later on, you can add Archons if you really want. Rory is uh, Hellbats and Goliaths. You might be noticing a pattern here for me personally. <laughs> I only ever use the first two units in each of them. So it kind of makes most of the other stuff worthless. Like, this is pretty much unnecessary, unnecessary, unnecessary. I'm actually not a fan of Hercules. It says massive, but in reality it can only store like 15 of your units, which isn't enough to justify making them. Um, and then I'll just skip over these and go to this guy. This guy is actually uh, probably my favorite class to play. Once again, I only used the first two units. Um, the rest are not needed. And uh, these units spawn every X interval for free, which is pretty fun. And yeah. So that's a slight overview of that. And then lastly, I'll show the mastery points here. So, uh, so right now I have 24 mastery points, which means I'm level 24 in the up to level 180. I presume points because 60, 60, 60, 60. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're very minimal. Like you'll notice here I have 8 points invested and I have a 4% chance for this to occur. And it's so low that it's just pathetic. And once you reach level 30, that's only 15%, which is still kind of low. But then some of them are better, like reducing the cooldown on one of your abilities. Uh, at three a second, that means at the end you're shaving off a minute and a half, which is pretty good. I'm pretty sure that's like a 50% reduction. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this new series. Uh, because, uh, because of the repetitive nature of the games, I'll probably just do like nine videos total, or however many maps there are. One, two, three, four, five, probably like 15. Uh, because... Truthfully, a lot of the games end up very similar, and that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.